Hey folks, happy Friday. Welcome to your uh, edition of Fireside Chats at Lake Superior Art Glass. Uh, today we're gonna be making some chandelier parts. So um, this is uh, something I learned from Philip Vogelpohl out in Boise, Idaho. Um, I've helped him install a number of really large scale chandeliers. And um, so a lot of times when folks see these chandeliers, um, most people would think they're done with soft glass out of the furnace. Um, but actually what Philip has taught me is that doing it with the torch um, is a great way to uh, reduce weight. So furnace glass pieces just inherently are thicker and heavier. Um, and so by doing it with a torch, you can get them thinner, reducing that weight, which on a massive scale really, really makes a huge difference. So um, I, uh, I've made a couple chandeliers over the years. Um, the one has been in our entryway of both locations uh, probably since 2015, I wanna say. I probably got that one up. Um, and uh, so you might not see it, it's a little high and it's always right above the entryway, so you may have walked underneath it 10 times and never noticed it. Um, but Jody posted a picture on her Facebook page of uh, the view from down below that chandelier. So uh, it's a pretty cool piece. Um, there's a number of components that go into it. That one um, from tip to tip is probably, I wanna say about four feet in diameter, maybe a little less, maybe 40 inches or so. Um, and it's, it's pretty rounded, so it's almost you know 40 inches in all directions. And if I remember right, there are over 150 pieces in that one chandelier. Um, and it's, you know, that's a small chandelier as far as, as far as those go. So, um, these massive ones take tons and tons of parts and, uh, it's kind of like, um, when you, when you well, when you're laying stone, my grandpa was a stone mason and so, uh, he mainly did bricks and block, but I got to help him on one stone project in particular where it was real split face field stone and it had never dawned on me how much extra stone you needed in order to get the right pieces to fit in the right spots. And so these chandeliers are the same way. You have to make a ton of parts um, because you don't know exactly how many of each part you're gonna need to fill the space. Because the goal is that you can't see the interior um, cage structure and the light on the inside of that chandelier. So um, yeah, it's kind of a shotgun approach. You just make a ton of all the parts and then start putting it together and hopefully you got what you need. So. I've had about half the parts I need for uh, the second chandelier made probably since about 2015, maybe 2016. Uh, yeah, it was probably 2016 when we made a bunch of those parts, I bet. Um, and uh, yeah, just haven't had a chance to finish it up. So um, during this time, that was one of my projects I wanted to get done was getting this new chandelier uh, finished. And so I had all the parts unpacked, looked at what we had, and then realized I had to make a bunch more squiggles which are the long parts that really extend from the, uh, uh, the, the body of the chandelier. So that's what I'll be making today. Um, I had Andrew, one of our glass floors, get me a bunch of prep work ready before, uh, before we officially shut down a few weeks ago. And uh, so I'm gonna be using some of that prep work today to make some of these big squiggles. Um, and they're a fun process, they're a one-shot deal. Um, you just go for it and you get what you get. And that's another reason why you make a bunch of them. So. I'll make a few uh, live. They, they go fairly quick, actually. Um, so I'll make a few of them so you guys can watch the process. Um, I kind of step back when I do the squiggles. So I think right here, you guys should still be able to see what I'm doing, but my, my folks will be on the glass. So if I go out of frame, I apologize. Um, let's see, what other updates? Uh, yeah, so I haven't figured out what, uh, what we're gonna be doing for demos next week. Um, I'm, I'm kind of running out of new ideas. Um, I have a lot of things I need to make. Uh, but they're things that I've already demonstrated. And so we wanna keep things fresh and new for you guys. Um, but at the same point, I do need to keep making inventory. So um, just a, a fair warning, there might be some potential for repeats next week. Um, we'll see, we'll still do live streams, but um, it might just be something that you know I've already demonstrated. So just fair warning there. Um, we do have custom orders. Um, the design your own pendant is still going on. So if there's pendant, ideas you'd like to see me make uh, live on air, submit those through our website. Um, our Suncatcher Icicle Earrings are on sale right now, so it's a great time to spruce up your spring wardrobe with something a little flashy that catches the sunlight that we're seeing more and more of these days. And our um, Artist Relief Fund uh, 
fundraiser is still going on. So $5 of every local image pendant sold in the month of April uh, gets donated to the Artist Relief Fund of Minnesota. Um, so we can give back to other artists who are uh, in need of that at this time as well. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna start uh, making some chandelier parts and um, hope you guys enjoy it. As always, ask questions if you got them. Oh, and an update on our living room project. We're almost done. We did all the, painted the radiators last night, did the final cutting with the trim. Um, we're cutting in with the trim. And yeah, today is like cleanup and scraping the windows and hoping to move some furniture back in tonight and have our living room back. That'll be nice. Quick weekend project turned into a seven day project. Not really a big surprise there. Um, really quick before I get started, uh, if you guys haven't seen some of my other demos, this is my blow hose setup. So it's this funky thing I jerry rigged around my neck. I can blow into it. And then I've got this little boot on a swivel. Um, both of these pieces swivel on that 90. It's a little stainless steel swivel made by a, a great glass blower in the um, Rochester area. And uh, so this will go, the tube will go in here and then I can blow through it without having to put the tube up to my mouth. So you can kind of hear that. So I've been preheating the sections of tubing in the kiln and, uh, and then we'll get started. So this is some, uh, I think it's about 50 millimeter. Um, this is actually what's considered the yellow color, the Asian yellow. Um, very similar to the amber, it can turn to amber if you don't strike it correctly, um, but it's definitely a little lighter. So the, uh, the color scheme for this chandelier that I'm working on, um, I'm calling like a sunburst. So it is uh, starting out with like red at the bottom and then fading from red to amber to yellow. Um, so this yellow squiggle will go more towards the top of the chandelier. So I'm gonna start by evening out the tip of this. Um, that is where our loop will attach. And so we really want that to be the thickest and, and most even. Oops, looks like I need to adjust my white balance on the screen again. There we go. My Facebook Pages app decided to uh, it needed to do an update right before I went live. I always, you know, set it up and get the angles right and get everything ready to go ahead of time. And like four minutes before 10 o'clock, it just crashed. And I went to reopen it and it was like updating. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. But got it all figured out. So we're doing good now. Just doing really subtle blows there. I don't really want to expand it and make it much thinner. I'm just trying to get uh, get things evened out on the tip there. So by blowing while it was in the marver, I was able to keep some of the areas from blowing out too much and allow other areas to blow out more. Hi Lisa, thanks for watching. All right, that's a little more uniform. So now I'm gonna heat up about a third of this tube and I'll blow it into a pretty good sized bubble, probably about, oh, I don't know, size of, uh, somewhere between a baseball and a softball.
I'm going to stick a handle on the top. Hello, Jake from Duluth. All right, got that handle on there. Then next, I'll heat up the remaining section of the tube. I'll get it super hot and I'll stretch it out and swirl it up all at the same time. And I'll stretch it out probably close to about 18 inches. So it's gonna get really long really quickly. Those are so fun to do. All right, so I'm gonna pop a little hole right up at the top for uh, ventilation, because I'm gonna seal this. crucial finishing step. So now I'll put a loop on the top here. That's how it'll connect to the framework of the chandelier. It's interesting doing that with this yellow color. I haven't made a yellow squiggle like this before and every color has different viscosities. This yellow color is really, really soft. So I actually had more heat in there than I actually needed when I made this squiggle, so now I know. Okay, there's 
our loop. Now, got some barbecue tongs here with Kevlar on the ends. And I'll finish it up. I'm going to remove some of the tip of this to get it to look a little better. And there's our squiggle. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the kiln and uh, show you guys another one. Those are way too big for my, my kiln to the right of the bench here, so they go, uh, go into the big kiln on the other side of the studio. So let's do another one here. Let's see. And here's a piece of amber. Eh, no, that's yellow. You can see the difference between the yellow and the amber. When it's hot, the yellow looks amber, but compared to the amber, it's obviously a lot lighter still. So we'll do another yellow one since I've kind of gotten the feel now of the viscosity of that glass. <coughs> So I evened up the tip there. Now I'll start heating up about two inches of the large diameter. Amber asks, how do I get the bubble in there? Um, it's, it's a hollow piece of tubing. So um, that's how, as flame workers, we buy our glass. If we're gonna make um, something hollow and blown, we're gonna start with a, a hollow piece of tubing. That's how we buy the glass. So. This amber section of tubing started out four feet long and it's about two inches in diameter. Um, and then one of our glass doors, Andrew, broke it down and put it on all these handles for me. So that's one of the things that I have our, our flame workers doing um, when they're not teaching classes is they're doing um, prep work for me for things like this or doing some production work. Um, but they help out with a lot of different things like that. You know, they might have had their hands in just a small part of the prep work for a piece, but They've had their hands in a lot of projects, even if they didn't finish those projects. Um, just helping them get started for me, save me some time. All right, so we got our bubble there. That's uh, 
Not as big as a softball, but definitely bigger than a baseball. Uh, Jolene is asking what the COE is. Uh, this is all borosilicate or Pyrex, so it's a COE of 33. So it basically expands and contracts about a third as much as kind of standard artistic glass does. There's a number of different coefficients of expansion of fusing and, and blowing and slumping glass, uh, but they're all within about 10 COE of 100. And so Pyrex or borosilicate being 33 basically means it expands and contracts about a third as much as other glass uh, when it's heated and cooled. Um, so a quick history lesson for Pyrex or borosilicate. Um, it was designed as a laboratory glassware. A uh, German chemist by the name of Otto Schott in uh, 1891 was sick of his flasks and test tubes and beakers exploding when he put a Bunsen burner underneath it to create reactions. And so he set out to, you know, formulate a new type of glass that was not as prone to thermal shock. And so that's where we got borosilicate. That's the technical name. It's uh, got added boron and silica um, from a regular soda lime glass formula. And uh, Pyrex, we call it that just because people know that name. Um, it's technically just a brand name, kind of like Kleenex. Um, but at least people have a you know some reference for what we're talking about then. <clears throat> However, uh, most Pyrex today um, is all like bakeware and cookware and stuff like that. And uh, Corning sold the Pyrex brand a number of years ago, probably at least ten years ago, to another company overseas, I believe. And when they started making. Uh, their stuff under the Pyrex name, they stopped using borosilicate glass. They started using uh, tempered glass or, uh, or just like a hardened glass, which does not have the same thermal shock properties, which is why some people have uh, their casserole dishes, their Pyrex casserole dishes exploding in their ovens and things like that. So if you want the real Pyrex, real borosilicate Pyrex, um, you gotta get the old stuff. I know I've got a couple pots and pans that are that, kind of that nice ambery brown color, probably from the 80s. Um, that's true Pyrex, I believe, or borosilicate, I should say. This one's looking a little bit more, more like how I, I want them to look. Have a nice squiggle with a more bulbous end to it. it always takes a few to get into the swing of it. Pop my vent hole. The reason you need the vent hole is just because when you've got a, a bubble of glass like this and you try to seal it completely, 
the air inside that bubble is cooling and as you go to try to seal it up, um, that air cooling means that it's contracting and that will make your hot area where you're trying to seal it want to implode. And so that would mean that the tip of my, uh, my point here would not have a really nice rounded bulbous shape like I'm hoping it will. Instead, it would be kind of collapsed and flat looking. So pop a little hole for that, the air pressures to equalize out. Okay, we got our loop on there. Now we'll grab our tongs. And go ahead and finish this up. goes. Oh yeah, Amber's talking about the, the flowers at the uh, at the fairs and the horses. Those are awesome examples. They're kind of things like what I'm doing here today where it's a really impressive thing that you can do really quickly. Horses are very challenging. I call them the one trick pony that once you can, once you can make a sculpted glass horse all in one heat, um, you've definitely achieved some sort of status in glass blowing. I don't know what it would be called or anything like that, but it's a, it's definitely a status thing that uh, once you can do that, you, you kind of earn everyone's, you know, respect in the room as far as glass blowers go and um, they, they know you're proficient at that point. All right, so we'll do one with amber this time. Not sure if the glass will move much different or not compared to the yellow. It might be a touch stiffer, but we'll find out.
stick our handle on there. This handle is basically twofold. One, it allows me to control the squiggle. There's no way I could stretch out and squiggle the bottom in any controlled fashion without another handle. Um, and then as you know, eventually it turns into the loop on the top. So definitely has two different purposes in this project. You can see how much darker this glass is. It's a really pretty amber color. There you can see a little bit better how it, how it looks. Now I got a little bit of a kink in it. That's one of the hardest parts to do. So while I'm squiggling this, I'm also keeping a little bit of pressure in the, uh, the glass through my blow hose to help maintain the round shape of the bubble. Um, the tricky part though with that is that you've got to have it uh, uniformly heated, otherwise it'll just blow, blow a thin spot wherever it's the hottest. make the loop. I wonder why I was having such a hard time seeing through my shield today. It was at just the right angle that it was reflecting the light behind me right into my eyes and I was like, man, I just can't see what I'm doing.
There we go. Another finished squiggle. Alright, so that's how you make squiggles, or how I make them. Um, Amber's asking how many swirls will the chandelier have? I really don't know. I'm just making a whole bunch, and I'll, I'll use as many as I need. And then I've got them left over for future uh, projects as well. Um, it's always good to have extra, and, and that's what you want when you're making a chandelier. So you always want more than you need, so I'm going to keep making these for another hour or two today. I've probably got... Oh, let's see, a dozen or so more pieces prepped up that I can turn into squiggles. And then I'll, uh, I might be good. We'll see, that might be enough or I might make some more just to be safe. Luckily here, we've got the benefit of doing it in house so that if, you know, if I'm short, I can just stop and make some during the, during that day when we're assembling and have them by the next day. But if you're on an install in someone's house or in a, you know, building or something like that, if you're not local, that can be an issue if you go with not enough parts. So uh, I would anticipate this whole chandelier will have about 150 pieces in it. Probably, I don't know, maybe 30, 25, 30 squiggles, somewhere in there. So yeah, so that was uh, my fun demo for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, as always, make sure to like, subscribe, follow. Um, we are putting these up on YouTube. So if you're into that, please check our uh, YouTube page and subscribe to that. Um, cause we'd like to keep doing these in the future and just put in kind of all, you know, rundowns of everything we do on our, on our YouTube page. So, um, yeah, we appreciate the support. Uh, we've got our pendant fundraiser going on all local image pendants, uh, uh for the month of April, $5 from each pendant sale goes towards the artist relief fund of Minnesota. Um, the sun catcher earrings are on sale right now. Um, our clearance section, we've got a bunch of slash prices in there. And uh, there's one other thing I'm forgetting. Hmm. Oh, the designer on pendant. So if you've got ideas uh, of a pendant you'd like me to make and want to watch me do it live, uh, head over to our website, lakesuperiorartglass.com, fill out the form, and uh, we'll get back to you and let you know if that's something we can do. So uh, as always, we appreciate your support. We appreciate all the online orders we've been getting. Please keep supporting your small businesses. They all really need your help right now. Um, I don't know if, how many of you guys have heard, but all the small business owners that I know, um, none of us have gotten either of the two federal uh, grants or loans that were made available to small businesses. So um, yeah, we, a lot of us have applied and most of us have not gotten them. So uh, we appreciate everything you guys are doing for us at home. Keep staying safe and uh, yeah, hope you're all doing well. We'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend.